The insanity of climbing Mount Everest hasn't reached its peak yet. To take this insanity to next level, genon gas will be pumped into the bodies of these climbers who wouldn't be bothered by the extreme altitude of Mount Everest. This miraculous doping system will allow any climber to climb Mount Everest like an ordinary mountain. And if they train, they might day hike to the summit of Mount Everest. Yes, this is true. Furtenbach expedition claimed this can be made possible with the help of xenon gas. Once their client arrive in Kathmandu, they will start inhaling the xenon gas into their bodies. This will make their body ready for the high altitude. Within few hours, they will fly to the base camp of Mount Everest. Even before they reach the Mount Everest, Sherpa will be ready to pick up these client. Rope will be fixed from the bottom to the top of the Mount Everest. Tons of supplementary oxygen will be available in advance. So when these clients arrive at the base camp, they can start to climb toward the summit of Mount Everest. Within next 3-4 days, these clients will hike from camp 1 to camp 2 to reach the summit of Mount Everest and then return back to the base camp, making this trip round trip from home to home in less than a week. These clients are not willing to spend more than a week in the mountain. The idea came after some wealthy and lazy people expressed their desire to conquer the world by climbing the Mount Everest. But they are too busy making money in their life. They don't have time to train. They don't have time to acclimatize. They don't have time to hike to the base camp of Mount Everest. Yet they want to sit on the top of the world. The German anesthetist Michael Fries contacted the Lucas Furtenbach who runs the Furtenbach Expedition Company. Michael Fries proposes the idea of using xenon to produce EPO in our body. EPO is a hormone known as erythropoietin. It's really important in acclimatizing in high altitude. When we expose our body to high altitude, our brain sends the shortage of oxygen in our blood. Our brain signals kidney to produce more EPO. EPO simulate bone marrow to produce more red blood cell. As we get more red blood cell, we get the more oxygen carrying capacity. And that's how we adapt and acclimatize in high altitude. And if we fail to acclimatize in high altitude, we suffer from acute mountain sickness. We get the swelling in brain and lungs, and it may lead to death. When climbers hike to the base camp of Mount Everest, they slowly gain the elevation which gives body enough time to produce EPO and acclimatize to higher altitude. Even when climbers are in the base camp, they hike to the neighboring peaks, neighboring easy 6000 peaks. This helps their body to perform well when they actually climb the Mount Everest. But this natural process is slow. It requires someone to stay in the mountain for a certain amount of time to produce enough EPO to climb Mount Everest. Some of these expedition companies have come up with a different unconventional method of acclimatizing your body. One of them is hypoxic tent. If you sleep in a hypoxic tent, your body actually experiences the high altitude. You experience the shortage of oxygen and it produces EPO and it makes you ready for the high altitude without needing you to spend time in the mountain. Another popular method is blood doping. A blood with high concentration of red blood cell is infused into the bloodstream of a climber. This eliminates the need of acclimatization and body will still perform really well in higher altitude. Injecting synthetic EPO into the bloodstream of climber is not uncommon in mountaineering community. These synthetic EPO will do the same job as natural EPO produced by our kidney. These synthetic EPO will simulate bone marrow to produce more red blood cell. That will improve performance and prevent acute mountain sickness. Even with these alternative methods of acclimatization, rich client and climber are not really satisfied. They want something more effective, more powerful, time saving, something that can provide the same result within half an hour. And Xenon doping system promise all of that. In Xenon doping system, climber will wear a mask and inhale a gas that is a blend of xenon and oxygen. Often xenon is about 30% and 65% of oxygen. They will inhale this gas for half an hour, then they will be ready to climb big mountain like Mount Everest. This method claimed to boost significant amount of EPO in our body. 
it will also improve the aerobic capacity of a climber. Genone is banned in competitive sports. It was first recognized as a doping substance in the Winter Olympic of 2014 when a Russian athlete was tested positive for Genone substance. Technically, Nepal government doesn't care if you use drug or steroid or any kind of substance to boost your performance, you will still get the summit certificate. Right now, we are not sure if this method actually works in the Mount Everest because it has not been tested in the Mount Everest. But Lukas Wittenbach claims that he has used this method in Aconcagua. He climbed the Aconcagua from a very difficult route and he had absolutely no problem with breathing. He had really good oxygen saturation on his climb on his summit day. He is so confident that he decided to try this method on his climb in Mount Everest. If this method actually works, this will become a standard in the Mount Everest. Rich people will come and thrive in the Mount Everest and they are ready to pay any amount of money these expedition operators ask. They are going to pay any amount of fee Nepali government will ask. Nepali government won't hesitate to hike the price of permit fee in Everest. This will make Mount Everest restricted or limited to the rich people only. Those people who are saving the money to climb Mount Everest in future won't have access to the Mount Everest because it's going to be really, really expensive. The Nepal government won't care about who climbed the Mount Everest. They care about the revenue they get from the Mount Everest. So if these rich clients are going to be interested in the Mount Everest, they are going to hike the price of the Mount Everest. And that's why we are talking about this method in this video, because it's going to affect the normal people. When this doping system becomes standard in the Mount Everest, many local people will lose their job, especially those base camp staff because these clients are hardly staying at the base camp. Right now, there is protest going on against these helicopter companies in the Kumbu region. These helicopter has taken over the local job already. The logistic that is used to be carried by the local people in their yard is now carried by the helicopter to the base camp of the Mount Everest. These possible consequences of doping system doesn't look good to me. It's going to benefit big player and big tour operator and big companies, but it is going to affect local people and small tour operator in a negative way. On the positive side, there will be less human waste and less consumption of resources at the base camp of the Mount Everest. But in the upper camp, dealing with human waste will still be a challenge. Lucas Furtenbach is ready to embrace the criticism he is going to receive. He has already responded to his critique in advance. So in his word, it's not an organized sport. So technically, there is no doping system. Right. There is no regulatory body that is going to claim it is a doping system and it would not be counted as a summit. Nepal government is not going to do something like that. They are going to allow anyone with doping system or destroy it to climb the Mount Everest. But it is killing the spirit of adventure. You are trying to seek something without dedication. You are claiming the summit without going through the actual challenges that mountain offer. You are seeking sex without romance and meaningful relationship. You don't have to suffer to show respect for the mountain and doing it faster doesn't make it easier. Well, it does because you are utilizing supplementary oxygen. You are utilizing Xenon doping system to accomplish your goal and you are eliminating the most difficult and challenging part of the climb, that is to breathe in the thin air. Renaud Messner once said, Alpinism is only real if you can die, but for me and my client, dying is not an option. Well, then stay at home. Would you call that extreme adventure if there is no possibility of dying? These climber and client want same level of respect that other climber are getting, but they are not willing to work hard, they are not willing to put the dedication, they want shortcut. Only if these rich clients get some experience in the mountain, train hard, put some dedication, they don't have to worry about dying in the mountain. Those who are against the Genon doping system are against the safety of climber. That's not true. Nobody is against the safety of climber. In fact, people want more safety measures in the Mount Everest. If Furtenbach really care about the safety of climber, they should come up with a solution to mitigate the danger of avalanche because avalanche is responsible for 35% of death in the Mount Everest. It will not only benefit their client, but it will also benefit other people in the mountaineering community. But they won't earn a lot of money from that. With Genon doping system, Furtenbach is going to make a lot of money from rich people. 
because it is really unaffordable it's not going to benefit any other people except the rich people because the base package is the base package start from $150,000. At the end, I would have to respect Lucas Furtenbach for publicly announcing his method. This could have been a secret within the wealthy people, but he decided to make it public and embrace some criticism. Lucas Furtenbach is a respected person. He is a well-known guide around the world, but his method is not going to be appreciated by many people. But at the end, despite all these criticism, if his method work is going to be adopted by many tool operator because it's all about money.